tens of billions uh, in rubles. That's assuming that they, uh, you know, invested it or husbanded it wi wisely. <clears throat> Excuse me. It may also depend on how rapidly the Kremlin moves against those assets, um, which all, which some of which may be subject to negotiations, some of which may be uh, just how quickly they can get there. Uh, I saw OPSEC's hand pop up. Uh, so OPSEC, if you want to respond quickly, then we'll go to Jane. Yeah, I'll be, I'll, I'll definitely be quick. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if they had, you know, hundreds of millions. I do think some of that got funneled into, you know, the larger, um, you know, Kremlin apparatus. Uh, and also keeping in mind that a lot of the, the assets that they have received come from MOD. A lot of these contracts were probably, um, you know, originally acquired through uh, the MOD. I think some of this has gone to Prigozhin and Wagner at large, um, and I think they're taking far more than we would expect uh, from the, you know, face value of the contracts. But I also wouldn't be surprised if some of that money is, uh, has either already gone to the Kremlin or if the Kremlin takes actions to then secure it, you know, after what we saw with the mutiny. Uh, we'll, we'll let one last uh, interjection from Schizo, then Jane. Go ahead, Schizo. Yeah, so with the gold mining, yeah, I would not be surprised if there's a decent portion that goes to the Russian government, but unfortunately we just don't have the data uh, on how much goes directly back to uh, the state. Uh, but in terms of the gold mining, particularly in uh, both Sudan and the Central African Republic, Wagner outright and Prigozhin personally owns the entire companies. It's like one of them uh, is Midas. Uh, there's a couple other uh, companies that he has direct ownership over in Sudan, uh, where he's the owner, operator, CEO, all that nice stuff. Uh, so like he's getting decent amount from just pocketing uh, from those gold mines, particularly in Sudan. But it's also worth, I would say, keeping in mind that, you know, what is ownership in Putin's Russia? And a lot of that does end up going back into Putin's coffers because that is sort of how he's operated, uh, you know, his influence over the oligarch class. Uh, to that end, and because, uh, you know, as usual, we're not going to have time to get through all the material I, I had prepared. Um, I won't speak to it in detail. The first should be the first item that will populate in the nest in a moment, hopefully, is my tweet on uh, resources, which uh, for me, I think just showed up. Yeah, so it's uh, front of the nest. Uh, it's titled resources. These are just a few of the recent reports, um, including one contributed to by All Eyes on Wagner, and then a whole bunch of material brought together by the DFR lab um, and some maps and so on. Some of those maps come with cautionary tales, by the way. Uh, so if you want to dig into you know, reports on what Wagner owns and where they operate, there are some resources there. But those are just from the last few days. There's, there's plenty more beyond that. Um, Jane, you've been waiting a very long time. Uh, thank you for being patient. Go ahead. No problem. I've been listening to what's going on and what everybody has said. And I think that... You know, it's an interesting thing that we're seeing unfold. Putin has run Russia through two things. Fear with a side order of violence when needed and money. And, you know, at least in, you know, areas in managing people, let's put it that way. Um, over time, he's never built himself a mercenary army, and I think it's causing him more trouble than he could possibly believe. It's sort of like never turn your back on the ocean or a private mercenary army. And I think he may have done that a slight bit here, gotten an amazingly well-trained army under Prigozhin, and is in a really bad position because of what's happened. I agree with the fact that I think part of Prigozhin's noise about supplies to Shugoi has been some theater 
um, as well as potentially necessity, but there's theater in there. And I think at the end of the day, the only way this is going to resolve for anybody, and I, I think the guys who are the fighters that have worked for um, Wagner are in a tough spot. I don't see them as I think Patrick and several other people have noted. These guys are are not normal troops. How are they going to find themselves getting folded back into a more normal uh, type of unit? I just don't see that happening. And you have an awful lot of of things that could blow up going on underneath you human beings that could get very angry about what's happening and i think that everybody is going to play the fear and money game and my thought about Pergosian, he's a smart guy he has offshored a rainy day fund for himself that's just a a guess but I cannot believe he doesn't have some money that he has got stashed away, you know, in Crete or somewhere that uh, isn't under the control of the Kremlin and that he can use for his own purposes. So I think that there are things here. It's going to be interesting to see what happens, but, I just keep looking at fear money. Is it Africa? Is it Belarus? And who survives at the end of the day? Those things, I think everybody that's spoken has really spoken all to those issues. And getting your head around all of it is the hard part right now. But uh, thank you very much. Okay, Jane. Thank you. Um, Aaron, would you like to go ahead and then we'll do the Africa updates? Sure. So I think that uh, if we see, I think if, uh, I'll agree with exactly, I'm not sure who said it, but uh, whoever said that they should have used uh, their uh, Wagner's, um, Wagner's people as trainers, some of their best uh, and most seasoned veterans as trainers for their, for their, um, for the Russian army, for the conscripts. You're bang on because I mean it's stupid that for them to not use their um, their training in this, and and I think that we're going to see we're seeing the collapse and continued collapse of you know the Russian I'll call it the Russian brain drain. We've been seeing this um, throughout since the shutdown, like since the collapse of the Soviet Union. We've been seeing that. Uh, when it comes to industry, we've been seeing that when it comes to military, we've been seeing that when it comes to uh, doctors, medical, um, it, we've been seeing that when it comes to a lot of things. This here really is no different. Now that a lot of the best soldiers uh, and even the Wagner forces, if they can't come home without, and, and they're not going to be used, you know, effectively, if they can't come home, then they're going to, they're probably going to be killed uh, in prison. I, I, some of the any Putin is, is petrified just as much as Stalin was or more after the Second World War. Uh, Stalin was just as is uh, petrified and scared uh, during the purge in the 30s, and he was even more so in the you know in the late 40s and after the Second World War. It really a lot of things came down to you know people just being arrested or there at work one day and then not the next. I mean, this is, this is the scenario we're looking at in Russia right now. Thanks. Um, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, as, uh, as insightful an analysis as ever. Um, so quick updates that I'm running through in the nest on developments in Africa. 